Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up in this week's news, I get asked what time of year it is at the end of 2020. I say how tall Ben is, 2.3 to 2.6 metres, and I explain why I haven't been outside today. Sunlight. Starting off the news this week, some news for hedgehog lovers like myself. A review of what were thought to be subspecies of soft-furred hedgehogs, usually referred to as moon rats and gymnures, has defined five new distinct species of the genus Hylomys. In this comprehensive study, which used both morphological data and that of the molecular, the researchers took advantage of museum specimens to elevate three subspecies to species status and actually defined two whole new species. While those of us from the more hot and dry or temperate countries in Africa and Eurasia will know of the spiny hedgehog, the moon rats and gymnures are instead found in tropical East Asia and subtropical evergreen forests in South China and Vietnam. As the results of this study may suggest, not a terribly large amount is known about them. One of the conclusions of the study was indeed to call for more research to be done on the subject, particularly looking at small mammals across Sumatra's Barisan Mountains, located on the western side of the Indonesian island. In other news, a study published in the journal Science has detailed some more analysis into the sample of the Ryugu asteroid carried back to Earth by JAXA's Hayabusa 2 spacecraft back at the end of 2020. It also compared the data from this asteroid to the meteorite known as Murchison that fell back to Earth in 1969. The study focused on the analysis of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs, from the samples. These PAHs are particularly abundant in the interstellar medium, the space between solar systems within galaxies. The researchers found enough of a certain type of carbon isotope to suggest that at least some of these atoms in Ryugu must have been formed in colder interstellar clouds, and therefore they are older than our solar system. A fascinating insight into the very atoms that make up the asteroids around our solar system. First up in the paleontology news for this week, we have the wonderful announcement of a new species of pterosaur, it was found in early Cretaceous aged rocks in China and is based on some incredibly complete fossils. Two specimens are known, with one of them comprising of a nearly complete skull and skeleton while the other is a partial skull. It's been named Meliphilong Yuhao, with the genus name being translated to Beautiful Flying Dragon, while the species name comes from the Mandarin word for friendship in celebration of two decades of Brazilian and Chinese paleontologists collaborating on pterosaur research. It's a kind of pterosaur called Kaoyangup pterid, and it's now the most complete and well-preserved of this kind of pterosaur. It's completely toothless with a very large opening in the skull, and with an interesting head crest that extends back above and behind the eye. The partial skull seems to have a smaller crest and overall smaller skull size than the more complete specimen so this specimen likely wasn't yet fully grown when it died. It's a really nice new pterosaur fossil that has provided paleontologists with a lot of new data on the anatomy of these incredible flying reptiles. Also in the recent paleontology news, a new specimen of small plesiosaur has been named this week. The fossils known of this species were found in localities in Wyoming and North Dakota, in deposits that represent what was once the Western Interior Seaway that split North America apart during the late Cretaceous. A complete skull is known for this plesiosaur, and it shows some very interesting anatomy, most notably the protruding ledges above the eyes, giving it a sort of angry look. It's been named Unctahela specter, the genus coming from the name of a keen-eyed horned water serpent of the Lakota people's mythology, while specter comes from the Latin to see. It's a type of plesiosaur called a polycoctylid, a Cretaceous group that convergently evolved with large heads and short necks of the much older pliosaurids. Various features of the skull show that this was a fully grown individual when it died, and is therefore the smallest polycotylid species found so far, with an estimated total body length of 2.3 to 2.6 meters, or about 7.5 to 8.5 feet. The function of the ledges above the eyes was probably to shield the eyes from sunlight, 
as seen in some living species of birds that have such a ledge, suggesting that it was hunting prey very close to the water's surface. It also has large and forward-directed orbits, suggesting it was a visual predator. A fantastic new discovery there then, plus the paper also revises some other already named polycotylid species, finding that two species that were included in the genus Dolichohincops are in fact distinct, naming them as Martinectes and Scalamagnus. So, an amazing new paper. Well, that's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and as always, we'll see you on Sunday. <laughs>